ऑनरेबल डायरेक्टर डॉक्टर ए गायर ऑनरेबल ड्रॉइंग डायरेक्टर डॉक्टर मनोज गोयल डीन एकेडमिक्स डॉक्टर अनिल अलावत डीन ऑल एच ओ डी माई डियर एस्टीम कलीग्स and the galaxy of intellectuals that is all the participants and our most important personality of the day that is distinguished guest of the event i madhu patel assistant professor at department of computer science and engineering guide group of institutions welcome you all to the inaugural ceremony of aicte training and learning faculty academy five days faculty development program on deep learning for computer vision organized by the department of computer science and engineering guide group of institutions i am very thankful to aicte chairman sir member secretary director regional officers and other officials who have taken a very good initiative to conduct online fgps in this pandemic situation so under their initiative we have planned this fgp on deep learning for computer vision in this fgp you will be enlightened with different concepts of deep learning and computer vision by eminent speakers the topic is computer vision piece of computer science that focuses on replicating part of the human vision system and enabling computers to identify and process objects in images and videos in the same way that humans do deep learning is a branch of ai that is specially good at processing unstructured data such as images and videos the recent success of deep learning methods have has revolutionized the field of computer vision making new developments increasingly closer to deployment that benefits end user so the details regarding this will be discussed by a different eminent speakers in different sessions but before all i would like to request all of you to please join your hands for the saraswati vandana thank you everyone once again i extend my warm welcome to one and all present here today we feel honored to have with us honorable chief guest dr raghuraj singh professor hod hbtu thank you sir for giving us your precious time dear all flowers are one of the most important mode of welcoming us it present warmness of expressions welcoming guest remains incomplete without flowers and for the same i would like to welcome our honorable chief guest with floral reception and to do this honor i would like to request our honorable director dr a gar kite group of institutions delhi ncr thank you kindly accept sir the kindly accept our birthday card as an expression of our affection and reverence thank you very much sir it's a great honor for me to introduce and welcome our guest of honor dr karmeshu professor shiv nagar university and request honorable joint director dr manoj goyal site group of institutions delhi ncr to present a floral welcome to him welcome sir welcome beginnings leading to great outcomes has been well brought out by the journey of KIT group of institutions since its beginning in 1998 with 180 students KIT has now reached 5600 plus students it has made an indelible mark in the domains of engineering management and pharmacy through the consistent efforts of more than 300 highly qualified and experienced faculty imparting wisdom to both UG and PG courses apart from ordered the NAC grade A accreditation till 2021 most of its programs are nba accredited a few distinguished accolades of the group are the department of scientific and industrial research has awarded the prestigious scientific and industrial research organization certification in 2020 the honorable vice president of india recognized kit group of institutions by positioning it in band a aria 2020 rankings among the top 25 institutes under the category of private self-financed institutions AICTE 
has endured position two to our institute under the Utkrisht Sansthan Vishwakarma Award in 2020 under category three, material, product manufactured, developed. KIT has also been recognized as a network institute of Indian Institute of Remote Sensing, ISRO, Dehradun Outreach Network in July 2020. Center for Education, Growth and Research has recognized KIT as the best private institute in North India for Innovation 2019. KIT has been reputably placed in the rank band of 201 to 250 by NIRF 2020 India ranking by the Ministry of HRD, Government of India. KIT has earned a four-star rating out of five for promoting innovation and startup in campus and has been designated as the best performing institution innovation council from the North Zone in 2018-19. ASOCHEM has bestowed excellence in enabling research environment award in February 2020 during their higher education conclave and with the Emerging Engineering Institute of the Year North EduShine Award 2019. The platinum and gold rating has been obtained in the EICTE CII survey 2018 and 19. QSI Gage has conferred its gold rating on KIT in 2018, Valentin 2021, and also conferred the E-Lead, E-Learning Excellence Award for Academic Digitization Certification in June 2020. NPTEL has ranked the institution third among the top 100 local chapters in 2019 with triple KIT achieved an overall first position during July to September 2019 by the AKTU Kalam Center, Kalam Entrepreneurship League. KIT has been consistently ranked among the top three institutes of the Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam Technical University due to its innovative and adaptive policies like live streaming of classes to effectively enable online teaching and learning, more than 3,500 lectures on KIT YouTube Maestro channel, 11 patents and one copyright have been filed and published in the Journal of Patent 36 2020 on 4th September 2020. The Beyond Curriculum initiatives of KIT include the Center for Automotive Mechatronics in collaboration with Mercedes-Benz India Private Limited and the Skill Next program in consultation with BMW India. The Society of Automotive Engineers, SAE KIT Collegiate Club has been participating in Baha SAE India, SAE NIS FE Cycle and Supra SAE in SAE India competitions on a regular basis and has won many accolades regularly for which it has been awarded by its president. Global recognition came its way in 2019 when it won the Neil Armstrong Best Design Award in the global competition of NASA Human Exploration Robot Challenge organized at Alabama, USA. The iOS and D-Link Labs, the Robotics and NI Labs give students an opportunity to work on projects and enhance their practical abilities. Codes Corner is available to students on a 24 by 7 basis to create a culture of competitive coding in the campus. Param Shavak, a supercomputing deep learning system, has been set up on campus to facilitate students in the domain of machine learning. The Department of Humanities and Social Science merges the expertise of English trainers with life skills trainers to enhance the employability quotient of the students across all streams by delivering a well-crafted 100-hour program over a period of four years. The Career Guidance Center of KIT provides educational internships both nationally as well as internationally in countries like Germany, Indonesia, etc. and also provides support to students by organizing GATE GRE coaching and foreign language classes like German and Japanese to the interested students. KIT has established a strong industry connect through its corporate relations and placement center and its subsidiary, the Internship and Industry Partnership Cell, enables internship and subsequent recruitment of students in more than 300 on and off campus recruitment drives, leading to 1,000 plus job offers five years in a row. Giving wings to entrepreneurship, the KIT Technology Business Incubator set up under the aegis of the Department of Science and Technology, Ministry of HRD, Government of India. TBI KIT has accelerated 92 startups, keeping in line with the New India program of the Government of India. KIT's Kalam Center has earned the overall first rank at the Kalam Entrepreneurship League, AKTU. KIT hosted the Smart India Hackathon Hardware Edition, organized by MHRD, Government of India, in July 2019 
and also hosted the Nomfix World Games in November 2019. A 5D event, Inspire, that is, Innovation in Science Pursuit for Inspired Research, was conducted at the Institute, wherein students from various eminent schools across the nation gained a forum for intensified, stimulating, and brainstorming interaction with the Vatnagar awardees. With the aim of increasing the awareness of students about the international educational system, the Institute organizes an International Education Awareness Week in January every year. KIT endeavors to be a catalyst for excellence by initiating the Young Dronachar Award for the best performing faculty member from every department and promotes research culture through the C.V. Raman Award at the institute level. KIT also recognizes the efforts of its technical staff and non-teaching staff by appreciating their contribution on 26th January and 15th August every year. Together, all together, KIT group of institutions not only molds its students into budding professionals of tomorrow, but also recognizes the contribution and support of its faculty and staff members in making KIT a catalyst for excellence. Thank you, everyone. Now I would like to invite Dr. Vineet Sharma, Head of Department, Computer Science and Engineering, Guide Group of Institutions, Delhi NCR, to please share his insights about this FTP. Sir, over to you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you, sir. My thanks to uh, giving a very wonderful impression about the kite about kite uh, through this virtual tour. Uh, Dr. Agar, Director, Kite Group of Institutions. Dr. Manoj Guer, Joint Director, Kite Group of Institutions. Dr. Anil Alava, Dean Academics. Our chief guest of the inaugural program, Dr. Raghu Raj Singh, Head of CSE Department, HPTU. Kanpur and ex director KNIT to Kanpur. Our guest of honor, Dr. Karnishu, distinguished professor of Srivnagar University and former professor and dean, School of Computer and System Sciences, JNU. Faculty members and all the participants for this FLMP. A very good morning to one and all. On behalf of the organizing team and on behalf of CSE department, I welcome you all in the inaugural ceremony of this one week Atal FTP on deep learning for computer design. It is indeed my privilege to welcome and greet our chief guest and guest of honor for accepting our invitation for today's program and sparing their valuable time for the same. I am also very happy to share that we are doing this inaugural ceremony on the most auspicious day of the entire year. That is the first one day of the Shravan Mass. The Shravan Mass has been considered the most auspicious month and is celebrated across the country with the puja and offerings made in the name of Lord Shiva, the Supreme God. So let me allow to discuss something that according to the Hindu mythology, when the gods and demons were churning the ocean, that is during the Samundra Mantra, poison came out in the month of Shravan. As with all gifts from the ocean, this too had to be accepted and no one was ready to have it. Then Lord Shiva consumed the poison, even though he was not the part of the churning process, to help the gods and held it in his throat, which turned it blue to dose the poisons. In fact, the grateful god offered water and devotees today to offer water to Shivlinga for the same thing. Sir, it gives a message to all of us that we can't enter of any incidents in our life without facing and solving the challenges which are associated with that. Sir, before telling you something about the FTP, I would like to give you some brief glimpse about the CSE department of Kite Group of Institutions. Our department was established in the year 1998 with the objective of imparting quality education in the field of computer sciences. The Department of CSE is accredited by NBA and it is valid up to June 2022. The department executes four year BTEC and two year AMTEC courses. As a well, the department is having a strong team of faculty members with high dedication 
towards their commitments. This rapid evolving technology and continuous need of innovation, the department has always produced quality professionals holding important positions in IT industry in India and abroad. The pass out students of the department are performing extremely well in almost all the leading organizations and making the name of department sparkle brightly. The placement figures of the department is also very impressive. In the last several years, it is more than 90%, with more than 5 lakhs per annum as an average package and highest package of 30 lakh per annum. For 2022 batch itself, seven students have got placement offer of 20 lakh per annum and it is again a good sign to achieve even better results in the current. Sir, our department is also having a center of excellence named Data Science and Deep Learning, that is DSDL, and having the state-of-the-art facilities. We have super, super computing desktop facility, that is Param Shavak from CDAC Pune. The Param Shavak has dual Intel Xenon Gold 6132, 14 ports, great server, each having minimum 2.6 gigahertz clock speed, 96 GB DDR RAM in balanced configuration with NVIDIA P5000 GPUs. About the FDP, it focuses on the research procedure. As we all know that a researcher, that for a researcher, it is mandatory to know the basics of the research and it demands a high level of individual and group efforts from, particip from participants to draw maximum learning benefits, to enrich the knowledge of faculty through interaction with eminent personalities from industry and academia. The Department of CSE Kite has organized its five day Atal FDP program on deep learning for computer vision. The purpose of this FDP is to bring together researchers and participants interested in both theoretical advancements and applications of research. I'm sure that this FDP will prove to be an eye-opening session for beginners and middle-level researchers and also impart the skills required to handle different tools and technologies that are useful during the entire process of the research. This FDP is intended to orient participants towards developing their own research. I would also like to express our deep sense of gratitude to all our resource seekers for this FDP. At the same time, I am also very much thankful to AICT for providing us an opportunity to organize this one week FDP. I also convey my thanks to the coordinators of the program. I am also very much confident that all the participants will have a very knowledgeable journey during these five days. Thank you all. Jai Hind. Thank you very much, sir, for giving your valuable insight about this faculty development program on deep learning for computer vision. Thank you, sir. Now, I would like to invite Honorable Joint Director Dr. Manoj Goyal, Kite Group of Institutions, Delhi NCR, for the welcome address. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, sir, you're audible. Yeah, thank you. Good morning, all. Honorable Chief Guest, Dr. Raghuraj Singh, Professor and Head HBTU Kanpur, respected guest of honor, Professor Karmeshu from Shivnadar University, our own Dr. Karnal Amik Garg, Director KIT Group of Institution, Dr. Vineet, Head of Department, Deans, faculty members and my dear participants. It's a pleasure to be part of the inaugural ceremony of the five days faculty development program in online mode on the topic deep learning for computer vision sponsored by AICTE Training and Learning Academy. On behalf of Kite Group of Institution, I once again welcome Dr. Raghura Singh and Professor Kameshu. Sir, we are thankful for accepting our invitation and grace the occasion with your presence. I am happy to see the participation from faculty members in such a large number 
from various part of the country. This shows their commitment to keeping themselves updated. The topic FDP, the topic of the FDP deep learning for computer vision is very, very, very important. Deep learning has fueled great strive in a variety of computer vision problems. The topic will, I, I, I'm confident, I'm sure the topic will discuss the development in deep learning architecture and algorithm for computer vision applications. I congratulate the complete organizing team for successfully conducting this FDP. Eminent speakers, the complete uh, eminent speakers from industry and the institution of repute are going to be with you all for five days and share their knowledge of wisdom on the topic of FDP in detail. I'm sure this will be very, very useful for you all. My best wishes to all the participants and organizing team Thank you very much, everyone, for having me here with you all. Thank you. All the best. Thank you very much, sir, for your rich words and sharing valuable insights about the FDP, which was indeed motivating and extremely informative. Now, I would like to invite Honorable Director Dr. A. Gard to address the participant with his words of wisdom. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, ma'am. Uh, Namaskar and a very good morning to uh, you all. Uh, Honorable Chief Guest, uh, Dr. Raghuraj Singh Ji, Guest of Honor, Dr. Karmeshu Ji, eminent scientists, academicians, and industry experts as resource persons to this FDP and all the participants. On behalf of KIT Group of Institutions, I once again extend a very warm welcome to you all for this very important FDP on the topic deep learning for computer vision, organized by our computer science engineering department for a period of five days starting today. Uh, if I talk uh, fundamentally about uh, computer vision, the field of computer vision is now slowly shifting from statistical methods to the deep learning neural network methods. And the computer vision is the process where a machine or a system, it generates the visual information by invoking one or more algorithms. Now, this understanding what is what is imbibed uh, after seeing this picture and the information, this understanding is translated into the decisions and the pattern observation. <coughs> now, the whole goal of this entire computer vision is to teach computers how to identify and categorize the visual world as we humans do. So that is the beauty, and that is where the, the importance of this particular FDP uh, is of relevance today. Now, if I if I talk about how how we have reached uh, today to this uh, FDP and we are talking of computer vision. And now uh, we see that uh, artificial intelligence was the first step in the direction, and then that was basically to impart human intelligence to machines. Uh, we saw the self driving cars and we see the robots. All this is because of the artificial intelligence. Now, machine learning being a subset of artificial intelligence, it is focusing on making the predictions based on the buyer experiences. Like what we see, the Google Assistant, Amazon, Alexa, they all are example of the application of machine learning. Now, the deep learning, what we are seeing today, is again a subset of machine learning, and in which you are basically, you are mimicking the network of neurons in a brain. How the brain functions, you are trying to do that uh, with the help of the automation with the help of the languages. So large amount of unstructured data, which will take humans decades to understand and process, and this is being done with the help of the deep learning. Now we see uh, some of the automobile sector example, if I can say, like the traffic lights, the vehicle, depending on the traffic light, it will, it will halt on, on its own. And the stop signs which are there on the road, it will automatically stop. And also it is it can detect the pedestrians which are moving on the roads. So all those are the applications of the data science of the machine learning. And behind all this is the data science. So the understanding of artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning and data science, they all are interrelated. And now when I see that so much of demand is there of the computer science branches, any admission, any aspiring student, any college, uh, you see the large number of uh, large number of disciplines which have been opened in the area of computer science and artificial intelligence and machine learning. Uh, 
So it's very imperative that as the faculty members, all of us, we have a detailed understanding not only of artificial intelligence, but of the deep learning also, and also the applications, like what we are talking of the computer vision. This is one of the applications of this AI ML DL, and all that we need to understand. And sooner we understand, uh, better it is for all of us. Now I look at uh, the, the menu on the uh, five day FDP, very, very well crafted menu, very balanced menu. Uh, I see that uh, it talks of the various models of optimization, then choosing metrics and hyperparameter tuning it is talking. Then also the libraries, TensorFlow and uh, PyTorch libraries in deep learning, there is exposure to that. And also the hands on training on the object detection. And also as uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Vineet mentioned about the research, how to use AI in research. That's again a very, very important. You know, ultimately we need to have the publications. We need to apply our understanding in the research. And among all this, I'm very happy to find a, a session on the stress management. Uh, so I think everything is very well uh, designed and there are enough, uh, uh, enough uh, takeaways. I'm sure there'll be enough takeaways for all the participants uh, for this uh, during this particular FDP of uh, five days. And I also find very, very eminent resource persons uh, from Dr. Deepak Garg, Dr. Sridhar Swaminathanji, Dr. Sarfaraj Masood, Dr. Sachin Chaudhary, Dr. Vipul Mishra, etc. And also there are a few very competent in-house resource persons from the Computer Science Engineering Department. That's again a very, very a good thing that we have our own faculty members who would be taking uh, the classes uh, during this five-day period. Now my request to all the participants uh, from various parts of the country that all of you must attend all the ses sessions and they, they are going to be very, very useful FTP. You must switch on the video. That's, that's one of the observations of what I normally see. Uh, it has to be an interactive session. Then only you can uh, gain the maximum uh, out of all the eminent people who are going to be present here. Take the advantage of networking. Uh, it's a great opportunity for a networking a project a proposal submission and collaborative publications. Uh, probably that will come out of such networking once all of you interact with each other and and some inten intangible benefits. You know, once you are there, once you are interacting, you are branding yourself. You know, people all across India, they come to know about you, about your institution. Uh, that would be a great benefit. Uh, so I'm sure that uh, all of you are going to definitely uh, uh, see these points and make a full use uh, of this uh, FDP. Like to also mention that uh, motivated by, by the requirement of uh, learning artificial intelligence and deep learning uh, by all students in our institution, KIT group of institution, being an affiliated uh, uh, college to Abdul Kalam Technical University and to address the aspirations of the students from the other branches like a mechanical engineering, electronic engineering student, he wants to learn artificial intelligence, machine learning, etc. So we have started a minor specialization in deep learning by computer science engineering department. Now that I am very happy to say that about 400 students have registered across the institution. And we have designed this specialization in such a manner that we make use of the vacation period for the classes and the in semester, uh, there are going to be identified MOOCs uh, online courses by Coursera and by NPTEL. And also there are going to be projects with the student would be working during the semester. So this is one of the things what we have taken and I feel it will address the anxiety and aspirations of all our students uh, to be computer literate, to be artificial literate. Now all that will depend. We'll see we have not deliberately made uh, the program to be very, very uh, intensive. It is it a light program for which you know, all the students uh, could take part from uh, all the uh, branches. Uh, KIT happens to be a very popular destination as uh, most of you should be aware. And uh, we are open to collaborations uh, with each, each one of you in the individual capacity or in the organizational capacity. Uh, we have got four schools with us, the largest being the Kite School of Engineering and Technology, where, where we have got the all branches of engineering and also the Kite School of Pharmacy, Kite School of Management and Kite School of Computer Applications. And I'm very happy to share that it's a very, very popular uh, institution and none of the seats uh, they uh, get, uh, they go unfilled. Uh, finally, uh, I take this opportunity to thank uh, our esteemed chief guest, uh, Dr. Raghura Singh Ji, uh, Professor and HOD HBTU Kanpur, the guest of honor, Professor Karma Shivji, who has been very frequently coming and uh, helping us and obliging us with his presence. Uh, also the AICT, 
for giving us this opportunity. The convener of FDP, uh, Dr. Vinit Sharma, uh, also the FDP coordinators, Dr. Dilkeshwar Pandey and Dr. Akash Bajpayee. I think it's a very, very smartly uh, designed FDP, and uh, I wish my uh, give my best wishes uh, for a, a successful uh, conduct of uh, this five-day uh, course, which is going to uh, start in a short while uh, from now. Uh, thank you very much. Namaskar to all of you. Thank you very much, sir. Your thought-provoking address set a perfect platform for our speakers to deliver their presentations in the area of deep learning for computer vision. Thank you very much, sir. I feel delighted to welcome our guest of honor, Dr. Karmeshu, Professor Shiv Nadar University. Dr. Karmeshu is a distinguished professor in computer science and engineering at Shiv Nadar University. Prior to joining Shiv Nadar University, he served as professor in JNU during the period of 1986 to 2017. Dr. Kameshu has published over 100 research papers in international journals. His work has been extensively cited in several journals and books. Presently, he is a vice president of the Consortium of Indian Mathematics. He is a fellow of National Academy of Science, Indian Academy of Mathematics Modeling and Simulation, and Institute of Communication Engineers and Information Technologist. Professor Karmeshu is the recipient of Distinguished Service Award of Vijnana Parishad of India, as well as the recipient of SSI Lifetime Achievement Award of System Science of India. For his outstanding contributions to mathematical modeling, Professor Karmeshu was awarded Dr. C. M. Jacob Gold Medal of System Society of India in 1990 and the most prestigious Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar Award for the year of 1993. And now I would like to invite our guest of honor, Dr. Karmeshu, to please enlighten us with his word. Sir. So good morning to all of you, Dr. Garg, Dr. Goel, Dr. Singh, Dr. Sharma, Dr. Pandey, and all young colleagues and friends. Kite is a very vibrant institute. Every time I come, I find there's a lot of activity, academic activity, which is taking place at Kite. And this particular program, organizing deep learning. Now, this is the buzzword. Everyone is talking about deep learning. Deep learning has generated considerable interest and excitement both in scientific community as well as industry. One of the first internet companies adopting deep learning was Google. Way back in, 19, in 2013, they hired father of deep learning named Geoffrey Everest Hinton. He made a big breakthrough in training of deep neural networks inspired by the neurons in cerebral cortex and the dropout mechanism. And this marriage of artificial intelligence and neurobiology is something which has revolutionized the entire field. It is said Google generated enough profits to fund all futuristic projects like driverless car, Google Glass, Google Brains. It is also very interesting, the multidisciplinary character of all the innovations which are taking place. Now, deep learning is one thing where if you go back, it, it has its origin, artificial intelligence. People were really excited, and you go back 1950s. And they were thinking that we can do something breakthrough using computers, logic programs, all these things, writing big programs. And if there's a bigger problem, then we can still write a bigger, pro bigger program. But the real problem was, if you have millions of cups, suppose you want to recognize a cup, how are you going to identify a cup? Are you going to write millions and millions of software? That was a big problem. 
you identify a bird is it all rule based logic or computer that is what works in our brain certainly not and this point was soon realized that human mind if you perform experiment that only 10% were really rule based and logic and others were more they the features and they look at the features and they can identify the objects and this aspect the features identification of features how you can recognize so this started becoming very very important like a child a one year child looks at all the data around and it start learning and that is how computer vision fed that vision facility is start developing so idea was whether we can also incorporate all the data around us and the vast amount of big data everything is there can we train our computers but the real problem was that if you start training your neural networks so it is large number of layers after layers after layers and this means there are a large number of parameters millions of parameters are you going how are you going to train it and this was a big problem which people were finding that the situation is hopeless and here comes hinton this fellow his name is jeff this jeffrey everest hinton his uncle one of the relations he was trying to measure the height of the everest so he gave the everest to his young boy jeffrey everest hinton this everest so F jeffrey hinton was a psychologist at university of cambridge then he did phd in the area of artificial intelligence his supervisor was a great chemist who was involved in new networking aspects so that is how the beginning started so what hinton did because they have all the neural scientists networks they were trying to see how are we going to do it because people just dismiss that millions of parameters how are you going to optimize even statisticians when you are dealing with 10 parameters you find the situation is hopeless because the optimization problem becomes a non convex optimization problem the system gets trapped into local minima how are you going to get out of it that is a big problem and that is a situation in all non linear aspects but what hinton did he said how the brain really looks at it and there are billions of neurons they are connected but when you start in cerebral cortex then many of the connections synapses they drop out and there are few neurons which take control that aspect he employed in the neural network he started dropping that is a drop out mechanism and when it worked it was a real real breakthrough and google was really smart they said okay hire this person and he all this now one after another all industries are following the thing but google has already made so much so much profit that all google brains everything is there now if you look at the history it is very very exciting so origin of deep learning goes back to 1950s as i mentioned two computing competing visions one is logic computer programs dominated for decades but learning directly from the data increase computing power abundance of big data so this transition from there to this place where there is a marriage of two disciplines that has revolutionized the field so this neurobiology information flow how are you looking at it now nature has mystery nature intelligence bacterial to human intelligence ai within few decades you find ai has developed everything but human intelligence millions of years to evolve deep learning branch of machine learning It has roots in mathematics, statistics, neuroscience. But important point is we are not good at imagining impact of new technology.
1943 let us go back watson ibm 1943 watson thought that there are only five computer that could suffice the world everything that was the thinking in 1943 then you go come to 1990 internet went commercial impacted music business taxi business political campaigns and so on you can just start big very very big list similarly when deep learning came google embraced deep learning even the transportation sector which is going to be multi trillion dollar economy all driverless cars in 2017 if you look at intel purchased mobile i for 15.3 billion dollars because they wanted that vision aspect and they can dominate the market big breakthrough came learning how to translate in different languages speech recognition learning to diagnose deep cancer everything now you say learning to make money all automated exchanges high frequency trading if you look at research publications now they are coming in stock market how they are using this in education field so the basic question one again comes is ai an existential threat that is some question which people are posing if the rate at which we are coming in our lifetime the rate at which things are happening whether we can adapt ourselves or not so idea is eventually those who adapt adapt will survive and the innovation is going to be the dominant thing in future thank you very much <clears throat> thank you sir for your encouragement and kind words and also for taking the time out of your schedule to grace this inaugural event thank you very much sir I consider it a great honor to welcome our chief guest Dr. Raghuraj Singh, Professor and HOD HBTU and former director KNIT Sultan. Dr. Raghuraj Singh is currently working as professor and head of department Computer Science at Engineering and Dean Continuing Education and Internal Quality Assurance at Harcourt Butler Technical University Kanpur. He has about 31 years of experience in teaching and research. He has published more than 150 research paper in national and international journals conferences, supervised 12 PhD theses, 26 MTech dissertations and more than 80 BTech and MC projects. Now I would like to invite our chief guest Dr. Raghuraj Singh, Professor HOD HBTU Kanpur to enlighten us with his works. Thank you, madam. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, Dr. Uh, A. Garg, director of the KIET group of institution, Dr. Manoj Goel, joint director, Dr. Anil Alawat, dean academic affairs, and all other deans, Dr. Vinish Sharma, professor and head of computer science and engineering department. Dr. Dilkeshwar Pandey, professor and coordinator of this faculty development program. Dr. Ashish Bajpayee, co-coordinator of this program. Professor Karme Suji, distinguished professor from Sivnadar University. Other distinguished faculty of the institution. distinguished resource persons who have been invited from various institutions and industry for delivering lectures in this faculty development program and my dear participating faculty from various institutions all over the country it really gives me pleasure to be part of this faculty development program five day faculty development program sponsored by aict training and learning academy on a very relevant and interesting topic in general on data science and specifically on 
deep learning for computer vision. At the outset, I would like to convey my sincere thanks and uh, gratitudes to the organizers, especially Dr. Dilkeshwar Pandey, who gave me this opportunity of interaction with you all. I would like to congratulate the organizers for selecting a topic for this faculty development program, which is the most emerging area of research and application as of now. Today we know that everybody in almost every industry is talking about some of the topics or some of the areas. These are artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, data science, 3D technology, blockchain technology, internet of things and so on so forth. If we talk about the topic of this faculty development program, the topic is very, very interesting and you can say that it is in general based on artificial intelligence or to some extent you can say on data science and particularly on the deep learning, which happens to be one of the subset of machine learning as has been pointed out by Professor Kormesu and he, have, he has given a detailed insight of that what is the uh, status of the deep learning in industry today. We know that everything behind the topics like machine learning, deep learning, data science is the artificial intelligence. So it is a generalized topic on which we have to think of that how intelligence can be incorporated into the machines or into the computer systems. And intelligence is not a single thing which is possible to be introduced into the machine. Rather, we can say that it is a large collection of or large set of various type of skills or traits or properties which make a person intelligence. So if we wish that the artificial intelligence has to be created into the machines, into the computer, in that case, these traits or these properties have to be implemented into the computer systems. If we talk about these traits or properties in broader sense, we can say the first thing is that we have to create the knowledge. Because knowledge is everything. Intelligence is based on the knowledge. If you don't have knowledge in that case, you cannot take intelligent decisions. You cannot perform the works which will be related with reasoning process or taking decisions with some of the domain. So knowledge is very, very important. Then you need to know the reasoning process. Similarly, the problem solving attitude or problem solving skills. Ability to manipulate the things, process the things and identify the objects. Learning process and likewise the planning as well as the perception. Perception may be related to the vision as well as it may be related to the language. So natural language processing or the computer vision, these are also some of the traits which are to be learned by the machine so that we can say that to some extent the artificial intelligence can be implemented into the computer systems. But the whole thing behind doing implementation of artificial intelligence into the computer systems is that we are available with huge amount of data from various sources or various resources. So what to do with this data? Ultimately, this data has to be converted into the meaningful content or meaningful items. So here our objective is that 
the data has to be transformed into what we call as wisdom. That is understanding of each and everything has to be developed and this understanding will be developed from the data only, which is conveniently available to us. So what is needed to be done is the data has to be transformed into wisdom. Now, how this transformation will be taking place? There will be various processes and various intermediate labels through which this transformation will be actually taking place. So far, we have been talking about the conventional systems wherein the requirement was that the data has to be transformed into information. What is data? You can say that the data is some unorganized, unstructured kind of facts which are available to us from various resources. So what was needed that these unorganized data or unorganized facts have to be transformed into information. Information is that when the data has been organized in the form of various facts and rules, this is basically of use for us. So, so we can say that the data has been converted into information. Then information can be converted into knowledge. What is knowledge? Knowledge is basically the concept about things and some of the algorithms which will be responsible for making manipulation, making transformation on these type of concepts. So conceptual understanding of various things along with certain algorithms will be constituting the knowledge about various domain. And then finally, the knowledge has to be transformed into wisdom. What is wisdom? Wisdom is the typical understanding of the various concepts. So it will be involving various strategies as well as the various kind of heuristics with which we can make useful conclusions from whatever wisdom we have. We can perform the reasoning process. We can apply the problem solving aptitude. We can apply the concept of computer vision or whatever. So if we have wisdom about a particular field, various problems related with that field or that area will be solvable with the help of the wisdom which is available into the machine. So whole thing is the big data which is available to us, this big data has to be transformed into wisdom. And during this transformation process, we will be making use of different type of concepts or different type of emerging areas which we call as the data science, machine learning, deep learning, IoT, all these kind of concepts or areas we will be using for converting data into wisdom and then using this wisdom for the meaningful purposes. Now we see that what is basically data science? Data science, as we know that science is basically systematic study of something. So here the systematic study has to be done for the data. So what is to be done is that we need to have some of the scientific methods with us. We need to have some of the processes with which the data transformation will be taking place. And we need to have some of the systems as well as the tools available to us. So making use of these scientific methods, processes and tools, we have to transform the data into the information, knowledge or wisdom. So in general, we can say that it is basically knowledge engineering or you can say it is the data science through which the data is being transformed into various forms and ultimately to the wisdom so that it can be used for the meaningful purposes. If you see the 
cycle of the data science, you will find out that it will be having the first phase as the data capture. So we will be identifying different resources and from these resources, the data will be captured or the data will be acquired. Then the next phase will be the manage and management and cleaning of the data. So cleaning process we will be applying to make refinement in the data. And then we will be doing the next phase, which is exploratory analysis or analysis of the data. That is, we will be trying to find out methods with which what wisdom is hidden into the data available to us. These methods will be applied to extract the data uh, wisdom from uh, this refined data, which is now available to us. And finally, this results will be reported and this cycle will keep on continuing. So this way, the data science, which is the generalized concept about all this, will be utilizing data analysis, data modeling or statistics, as well as it will be developing some of the prototypes or it will be applying the engineering methods to develop the systems. If we talk about Various topics which are needed, as Professor Karmesuji said, that artificial intelligence or machine learning, these are basically multidisciplinary subjects. And here you need to know neuroscience, you need to know statistics, you need to know various methods, you need to know programming, as well as the various tools which might be available to. Us. So these will be the various kind of things which will be required to be there. And if you see that what will be the kind of algorithms which will be utilized for the deep learning or the data science, these may be principal component analysis which we do for refinement of the data or the classification of the data. Similarly, decision tree analysis we can perform. A priori analysis can be done for making refinement of the data. Recurrent neural networks can be used. Artificial neural networks can be used. K-means clustering, yet another algorithm. Linear regression, logistic regression. So these are some of the methods which the data scientists use for making refinement of the data or conversion of data into the wisdom. And if we come to the various tools which can be used or which, which are available through various companies, maybe that Google Analytics we can use or ClickSense can be used, Insight Squared, Tableau, Tipco Spotfire, Class story data, KISS matrix, Crazy Egg, Burst, Excel, all these are the tools which are available in the market which can be utilized for the data science. And lastly, if we talk about the various applications about which we have to discuss in this faculty development program, the deep learning is finding application in almost each and every area. To name a few, like if we use the deep learning in healthcare system, various areas of applications may be that we have to perform the medical image analysis. That is very good area of research in which the deep learning can be applied or it may be the drug discovery system it may be the bioinformatics or it may be the virtual assistants. So concept of deep learning can be applied in medical or healthcare in these kind of various topics which I have discussed. Similarly, if we go into the transport area, we can say that the self-driving cars, enhanced driving experience, car monitoring system, 
enhancing the safety of the passengers. These can be various areas under transport field where the deep learning can be used. Likewise, in finance, we can use the uh, customers uh, segmentation. We can apply the strategic decision making process, algorithmic trading, or we can perform the risk analysis with the market. Likewise, in e-commerce, we have the application of the deep learning. This may be in the form of identifying the consumers or recommending various products on the basis of the machine learning or deep learning or analyzing the reviews, the reviews which are given by the customers. These reviews can be applied uh, or processed and they can be used for improvement of the products. Likewise, in manufacturing area, we can have predicting potential problems, monitoring systems, automating manufacturing units, maintenance scheduling, as well as the anomaly detection. So these may be various areas in manufacturing sector. Similarly, in banking sector, the application of the deep learning or machine learning may be the fraud detection, credit risk modeling, as well as the customer lifetime value. So these are the various areas in which the data science, deep learning or machine learning can find very good applications. And these are emerging areas of applications of the deep learning or the data science. So with this, these words, I would like to once again congratulate the organizers for selecting such a relevant topic for this faculty development program. And I am sure that the participants will be immensely benefited with the deliberations which will be taking place in these five days during this faculty development program. With this, I once again convey my sincere thanks and gratitudes to all of you for organizing such a wonderful faculty development program, which is of common interest today in the industry. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. We are really honored to have you with us. Thank you very much. Now I would like to invite Dr. Dilkeshwar Pandey, Professor, Computer Science and Engineering Department, Kite Group of Institution for vote of thanks. Thanks, Professor Madhu Kautam, for inviting me to propose a vote of thanks. Good morning to all. Honorable Chief Guest, Professor Agurabji, Honorable guest of honor, Professor Karmesu ji, respected di director, Colonel Amigar, respected joint director, Dr. Manoj Goyal, Dean Academic, Professor Anil Alavat, head of department of CSE, Dr. Vinit Sarma, invited guest, Dean, head of department, registrar, faculty member, Laverian staff, and ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the inaugural program of Atal FDP on Deep Learning for Computer Vision, it is my honor and privilege to propose the vote of thanks. Before I extend my vote of thanks to dignitaries on behalf of Kite Chambi, we welcome all participants who register in large numbers from different corners of the country. Sir, your presence is our strength. First, I like to thank our chief guest, Professor Raghuraj Singh Ji, for accepting to grace this day with his presence. Your gracious presence, sir, in today's function is a source of great encouragement to all of us. We thank you, sir, for your insightful and thoughtful speech. We are extremely grateful to Professor Karmesu ji, who accepted our proposal date even after his busy schedule and supported us in organizing such a grand event. Your invocation and patronage will enlighten our path of success. Thank you, sir. I would like to express my profound gratitude to management trustee for their 
moral support an event of such magnitude doesn't come together overnight the wheels must start rolling months in advance it requires meticulous planning and execution with an eye for detail we are fortunate enough to have colonel dr amit gar director and dr manoj goel joint director whose guidance and continuous support made this event a great success we always need your affection and blessing sir we are deeply gratitude to respected dean academic professor anil alawat and hod cse professor vinish sharma for their kind support and guidance at every moment i must express our profound thanks to dean head of department invited guests to grace this occasion my special thanks to print and press media for coverage of this event lastly i thank all the co coordinators and the member of organizing committee who have been involved in this exercise for last several months without your cooperation and full support it was not possible to organize event like this at last i am grateful to all those who helped directly or indirectly in organizing this event thank you very much sir jai hind thank you very much sir we believe that any academic event is incomplete without the national anthem of our beloved country thus i would like to play a national anthem beside i may please request all of you to please stand up for the national anthem okay that topic is deep learning and information theory i will also discuss some aspects of information theory how these aspects are so important this is a recent work by israeli computer scientists where they have established some bounds for deep learning based on information theoretic aspects next now we come to next slide Could you please move to the next slide कुछ प्रॉब्लम है क्या इज इट विजिबल सर या इट इज विजिबल सो नेक्स्ट यस सर यू आस्क देम यस सर एवरीथिंग इज फाइन या इट इज नेक्स्ट इट इज वेयर नंबर 3 पेज नंबर 1 यू ऑल पेज नंबर 1 या इंट्रोडक्शन या दिस वन वेरी गुड सो डीप लर्निंग एल्गोरिथम्स This is a successful machine learning method for supervised learning task. Those of us who are familiar with voice recognition, Android phone, those who are using Google Translate, internet, all these are trained by deep learning. Layered new network models. Next, Nim, is it? Can you move up? No, no. Can we go back and layer? So it was T. J. Sajonowski, very famous name in the neural networks. He was the president of NIPS. It was said that computer vision could not compete with the visual abilities of one year old. That was a general impression, but no longer true. computers can recognize objects in images as well as most adults can and this is the achievement of deep learning 
So deep learning, as pointed out, is a branch of machine learning, which has roots in mathematics, statistics, neurobiology, neuroscience, and then brain. How does brain function? Cortical brain. So all these different aspects of this. Next slide, please. Next. It is page number three, sir. Impact of, number, yeah, impact of new technology. Is it showing you, sir? No, not yet. Hello. Ah, I can't see. Next page, next slide. Impact of new technology. Next slide is. Very, very. Okay, yes, that's good. Thank you. So impact of new technology, as I pointed out, Thompson Watson, 1943, for that there is a world market for five computers which turned out to be totally wrong then internet when commercial impacted music business taxi business political campaigns and you can list host of other applications and then 2013 when google embraced deep learning hired Hinton. Google generate enough profits for futuristic projects like self-driving cars, driverless cars, Google Glass, Google Brains. So what all this shows, we human beings are not good at imagining impact of new technology on the future. It is really, really difficult that you can see what are the possible applications these new technologies are going to have and how are they change, going to change the world. Now, human intelligence, if you look at how human intelligence evolved, human intelligence took millions of years to evolve. Now, if you look at AI, in contrast, it only took few decades. Human intelligence took millions of years to evolve from bacterial to human intelligence. But so far as artificial intelligence, it took few decades. 1952, 2020, few decades. Next. So breakthrough in deep learning, shift from AI, artificial intelligence, people thought it's symbols, logic, and rules. It shifted to deep learning network based on big data and learning algorithms. So essentially it was based on neural networks. Because the brain has already different layers and they are all connected. These are massive connections. That is what people thought that our neural network, if you design like this, probably it can mimic the brain. So origins of deep learning goes back to 1950. There were two computing visions based on logic, computer programs. This dominated for decades. But then, as the computing power increased, the storage capacity increased tremendously, learning directly from data, learning algorithms more accurate and more efficient. Next. Commonly used deep learning architectures, recurrent, and if you look at all different architectures, these are different architectures. Our brains are powerful pattern recognizers. Our visual systems can recognize in a fraction of a second. Brains learn to perform many difficult tasks through practice. Nature uses general purpose 
learning to solve specialized problems. We are great learners. Potential of network models to mimic intelligent behavior. Next. Neural network, the motivation is organization of cerebral cortex. If you look at that part in brain, deep learning are found in all sensory and motor systems. So such networks are available in the brain. Our brains are not filled with logic or rules. They also experimented. Only they found that 10% of the human beings are fascinated by logic and rules. Others, they were doing things in a different manner. They would extract features and they could identify the objects. So multi-layer, I think there is a mistake. It is not player, it is multi-layer. P should be out. Multi-layer learning algorithms. Understanding mental and behavioral phenomena. And there was a big project. Parallel distributed processing by Rumel Hart and McClelland, 1986. There were two big volumes which came out and these volumes were so impactful that 50,000 copies of these books were sold. 50,000. So neural networks trained by back propagation have hidden units, properties resembling cortical neurons in the visual system. Given enough training examples and the network is big enough, learning algorithms will work and will aid in training the network. Next, this is a brief history about Everest. This was an undergraduate degree in psychology because that motivation came from the brain, behavioral aspect, associative memory, all these things in psychology. So doctorate in artificial intelligence from University of Edinburgh. Thesis as advisor, Christopher Higgins, chemist who invented early network model of associative memory. So this made a beginning, believed in the potential of network to mimic intelligent behavior. He was convinced that network models can mimic that intelligent behavior multi-layer network based on architecture of visual system that use convolutional filters. Basically, all you have given two signals, you define the convolution and then you go to filters, edge filters, all these things in image processing you study. So these are convolutional filters and simple from Hebin plasticity, precursor to deep learning. So as you are using more and more, this plasticity increases that is an aspect which they incorporated into like given memory and given experience. How are you going to modify? Hint an image net classification with deep convolutional networks. This was a paper he wrote in NIPS 2012. This paper reduces the error rate for correctly classifying objects in images by 18%. This turned out to be a very big breakthrough reduction by 18%. Next, then comes deep networks have millions of units and billions of bits. Now you see the problem is so gigantic. How are you going to do all this, handle this problem? And the breakthrough was he in turn realized that through regularization, that is a dropout. It is not that all the neurons are participating. All the units are participating. You just drop out and this cortical synapses mimic this behavior, drop out at high rate, building block based on convolution. This is a paper which published by Hinton along with others in Nature. And this is very interesting paper. So brief review. If you want, you can look at this reference. Next, we come to brief mathematical details. Learns a multivariate function. This is a high dimensional function. Why is superposition of univariate semi affine function? 
So this is basically we are going into theory of neural networks. Why should it work? There is superposition of univariate semi-affine function. So deep learning is efficient modeling of nonlinear functions. And there's a very interesting theorem by a famous mathematician, Russian mathematicians, kolmogorov arnold representation theorem. What it says, any function fx, x is a vector of input variables, you can write as summation of j equal to up to from 1 to 2 and plus 1, gj, summation hij, xi. This is a very well-known theorem. And hij is the univariate versal basis. Then Paulson and Sokolov, deep learning a Bayesian perspective to find the predictor of output. You give input as x, then your predictor, can you identify, can you find the predictor y given high dimensional input vector, vector x. Next. So learning machine. Now basic question is, there is an input you give x, then you have to map y. So classification problem requires patterns to learn. Given a function f, x goes to y, and they are all layers. They are categories 1 to k. Predictor is denoted by y hat. That is in statistics, when you estimate, you say y hat x. So our problem is construction of a multivariate function fx, building blocks of hidden layers. So your semi-affine rules, layer 1, layer 2, layer 3, FL, WB, B is the weight, Z is the number of layers, and BL is the threshold function. So mathematically, you can write down as a composite map of layers, which mathematically you can write down this first layer, then second layer, then third layer, then Lth layer operating on X. That is a composite map. So F is modeled by the superposition of univariate semi-affine function. This is in a nutshell, but references are there. You can, those of you who are interested in understanding why a network works, this is, will give you an better insight into this. Next. Next slide, please. How to select the number of hidden units? Where how many layers you should add? That turned out to be a very big question. How many layers? You can just keep adding layers after layer. But how many layers you should add? So deep prediction rule turned out to be Z1, F1, function of this, Z2, ZL, and BL are the threshold or activation level. So you have a deep prediction rule. So neural networks, they approximate univariate function as mixture of sigmoids. So every time you find the layer one, layer two, all sigmoid functions turned out to be a good recipe. And this new approx to approximate a univariate function. Next. Now we briefly touch all information theory, how information theory would be useful. We already know entropy of a random variate. X is a random variate with probability distribution Px. Entropy is defined as Pxi log minus summation Pxi log Pxi. And this is requires in bits. This was all introduced by Cloud Shannon way back in 1949. In the context of when you are sending signals over a noisy like a signal, binary signal 0, 01 over a noisy channel, how much information you can send, how much without errors. And second is how much you can compress. These are two fundamental questions. In that context, Cloud Shannon had introduced this area of information theory 
and this has turned out to be very very important all your brain all your modern communication system wireless communication optical communication cellular communication anything you take this is the fundamental bounds are provided by information theory mutual information two random variables i okay there is also i forgot to mention conditional entropy what is the entropy of x x hx is essentially a measure of uncertainty average amount of uncertainty if you observe a random variable y hx given y entropy of random variable conditional on the knowledge of another random variable this brings to mutual information which was introduced by cloud shannon for two random variables x and y the reduction is the mutual information how much is the dependence between two random variables there is a measure summation pxi yi log pxy px into py these are the marginals so x uh, mutual information i is a measure of dependence and if you know the mutual information you can define the channel capacity c equal to maximum of i a mutual information over all px so these are the fundamental concept which cloud shannon had introduced entropy mutual information channel capacity these are the fundamental thing so the question is in the context of communication they provided you all bounds this is the upper bound and once you are close to the upper bound then whatever you do you can not exceed that upper bound so in all your communication you can set the bounds similarly the question was can we ask how many layers we should have in dnn in deep learning new neural network how many layers we should have so that was a question in that context this idea was employed by tishbi israeli computer scientist if you just go to youtube you will find several lectures by tishbi at stanford princeton where he is going and giving idea how we are using the information theoretic framework and how we can say that we are going to reach the optimal level and then there is a next slide please function transformation suppose you have x y are your random variables you make invertible function psi and phi i x y is equal to this so what it means that even if you transform the mutual information remains the same provided it is invertible so conditioning reduces entropy h x given y if i observe y then the entropy reduces this turns out to be data processing inequality and this reference i am giving cover and thomas this is almost a classic those of you who are interested to get into it there are very interesting books on deep learning by ian good fellow there is a rogers so all these books are using referring to cover and thomas this is one of the very very classic and fundamental books cover was a professor of in electrical engineering and statistics at stanford and thomas was a student he is a graduate from iit madras that book turned out to be very very popular so important point is no clever manipulation of data can improve the inference that can be made from the data so now this theorem says if random variable yeah three random variables layer 1 layer 2 layer 3 x y z are set to form a markov chain in that order x goes to y y to z is the conditional distribution of z depends only on y and is conditionally independent of x then the data processing inequality tells the mutual information 
i x y will be greater than or equal to i x z and the equality will be when they are independent next now comes the important aspect sufficient statistic in statistics one of the very very important concept is statistical inference what is statistical inference you have a big population you draw a random sample from the sample you are asking is sample a good representative of the population so you say my estimator should be unbiased should be efficient then it should also be sufficient so this concept indian statisticians have also done lot of work on sufficient statistic so what you say data processing inequality clarifies an important concept of sufficient statistics we have a function density function f theta and x have a sample from a distribution in this family let tx be any statistic then theta goes x then tx then this inequality holds and this equality will be when no information is lost and tx is sufficient for it. theta so it means if this if we can identify sufficient statistic then our job in dn deep learning neural network will work optimal representation of information bottleneck this concept was introduced information bottleneck by tishbi bialek and this reference you can also read cheng liang gao gang 2019 representation learning allows to discover the presentation for feature detection a minimal sufficient statistic is the solution of the optimization problem so essentially it is a optimization problem arg min over all sx isx and x this is the mutual information the minimum tx is the simplest sufficient statistic the goal of dnn is to make isx that mutual information as small as possible then i am almost coming towards the end then next next slide please so this is a tishbi and pereira and bialek that is a paper the information bottleneck method the optimization problem is relaxed by allowing the map to be stochastic so this you will encounter the terms stochastic gradient method defined on as an encoder and then allowing the map to capture ixt as much as possible so i have also given references by tishbi deep learning and information bottleneck bottleneck schwarz and then finally why all this bottleneck we find dnn are analyzed by theoretical framework of information bottleneck principle dnn can be quantified by the mutual information between the layers and the input and the output variables we calculate the optimal information theoretic limits just like in all communication channel of dnn and obtain finite sample generalization bounds getting closer to the theoretical both by generalization bound and by network simplicity both the optimal architecture number of layers feature set each layer with respect to the output layer the hierarchical representations <coughs> in the layer network correspond to the structural phase transition along the information curve this leads to new optimally bounds and dll algorithm so this is something which was a breakthrough people thought that you are keep adding layers but there was no understanding how many layers and this has come the information theoretic framework that what is the optimal number and when you are achieving that maximum and you can stop so this is in a nutshell all the recent developments which are taking place based on information theoretic aspect there are sufficient references and once you get into it you can start finding more and more literature relevant to your field of dll thank you very much